Hello and welcome. I am your host, Hoda, and this is Hoda's Career Info, the channel for everyone seeking to learn about career services. My guest today is Herky Cutler. If you check his website, herkycutler.com, you will quickly learn that Herky is a multi-talented professional. You see, he is a facilitator, a trainer, a coach, speaker, author, and as you will learn today in Huda's Career Info, so much more. What truly makes him unique in my eyes is that he is also a performing musician. However, what you need to know is that Herky will always respond to your emails and he is forever on the lookout for new adventures in the career development field. Welcome to Huda's Career Info, Herky. I am so excited that you are here and we are going to have a good conversation about the career development field. Uh, I would like to start right away and dig in right away into your love of music. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the reason I want to do that is because I have been inspired by your presentations. Uh, many years ago, I, I watched you uh, uh, one of your presentations and I went and used music into my career practice and I love it. And I'm so glad I did it. And so are many of my clients. So my question. Oh, that's great. You, Maybe my we should talk about you using music. <laughs> <laughs> that would be in the next presentation. I think next time we'll do it live. <laughs> okay. Can you tell me a little bit about the importance of music for you and uh, the pra your practice? Sure. Well, first of all, it's a, it's a pleasure being here. And uh, thank you for asking me to come on, Hoda. I'm honored to be here. And I wish you the best in this uh, series that you're, you're promoting. I think it's fantastic. So music for me, uh, I've always loved music. Um, I started playing music late in life, uh, 19, I guess. And I was kind of an in-closet performer, um, never coming out playing in front of anybody until a high school kid back in 1992 convinced me to play in front of an audience. And that really changed my life musically because that got me uh, performing. And I've been performing ever since. And at some point, probably, I don't know, maybe a dozen years ago, maybe even longer, uh, I started to think about, well, how can I bring this thing that I love, music, into the other things that I love, and in particular, career development. And uh, <clears throat> I was working with a, a young high school student. He was actually working for me back in Pincher Creek. And I thought about this way to see if I could use how you know the types of music that people listen to as a career development tool in terms of an assessment tool so i asked this kid if he'd be my guinea pig and he said sure and uh, uh so uh, what i did was i asked him to bring in a song that moved him uh, not just a song that he liked the beat of or the band who wrote it but it actually moved him emotionally in some way shape or form and uh, he brought me in a song and we looked at the lyrics i got the youtube video up we watched the video and then I started asking him a bunch of questions and what I was listening for in the answers were what were his values, what were his interests, what was his passion. And I just made notes every time he said a word that fit into those categories, I just put it down on a piece of paper with his permission, of course. And at the end of the session, which, you know, and it was two and a half hours at the first session, we thought it was like 20 minutes and went by so fast. And uh, I showed him the sheet and I said, is this what you said? And I didn't use any of my words. That's a real key if anyone's going to try this. Don't use your words. Don't interpret what you think your client is saying. Just write down what he or she says. And he looked at him and said, yeah. And I said, well, there you go. There's your, there's your career development. If you ever find a job <laughs> uh, or do work experience or do job shadowing and this stuff isn't going on for you, uh, you're probably going to be unhappy. <laughs> so that's how it came about. That's what I saw in your presentation. And I, I, I really remember the most important thing is not to put your own words, but their own words. So I've really used that. And I always say, no, no, don't put your words. Don't translate what they're trying to say. So that has been very helpful for me to use it in my work and in helping me find the direction. So I chose music, but now it's your turn to think about what you would like 
to highlight about your work as a care professional? Well, I guess uh, I guess where I've moved into now is uh, training career development practitioners. So I've been doing that for, I don't know, 15 years, 12 years, something like that. Seems like a long time. And that's really rewarding for me. Not that working one to one with clients or groups of clients isn't, but it's uh, it helps me, I think, impact more people. Uh, so career development practitioners you know, they're working with all kinds of clients and if they use some of the tools or some of the things that I share with them that have worked in my experience, then maybe it helps everyone. So uh, I do it in a variety of different ways. I'm doing it um, teaching online courses for folks who are getting certification as a career development practitioner. Uh, I do it uh, through an associate of mine where we've been training Alberta government career practitioners for many years and now First Nations income support workers who are becoming career development practitioners. I do coaching with career development practitioners, group coaching, individual coaching. So I really love that. I think uh, that's the way I want to go. I don't really want to have any more career development clients one to one. Uh, so I'm, I moved on to the training part, which I really like. Well, you are very good at it. And uh, you and I were a part of Connexus this uh, January and I made a point of attending your session because uh, it's really what you would do, what you would do typically during this conference is uh, give us more tidbits as career professionals on how to get better at what we do. And um, I watched you, I, I made a point of watching you again this year because it was gonna be virtual mm -hmm. and because I was just curious whether you're gonna have the same energy. I mean, in live presentation, your energy was like, it was, the place was so busy, but you had us all engaged. And oh, thank um, you. You did, I wanna tell you that you did not fail virtually either. I was uh, amazed. Uh, I don't know if you had the chance to look at the chat box as you were talking, but it was constantly- Not as I was talking, no. <laughs> Absolutely. It was constantly busy. Like to me, it was almost distracting because people were either reacting to what you were saying or uh, commenting uh, with questions and so on. So um, I am, you said you have started online. So I'm uh, with online sessions. So I'm looking forward to learning more about your new online adventures because now we've all had to switch from live, uh, which you do excellent to uh, online. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about experiences and what kind of courses you're offering online. Well, uh, you know, when March hit, Hoda, um, just like everybody else who's doing this kind of work, uh, I had nowhere to go. There was, uh, you know, I'm a speaker, a trainer, and a musician, and I had no audiences. <laughs> so uh, there I am wondering, well, what do I do now? And uh, I came across this man. Uh, his name is uh, Adrian Salisbury from the UK. And in fact, that you might want to make a note of him if I haven't told you about him already. Uh, he was doing, I think the first academy I took with him was a YouTube academy. So it was learning how to make videos better than I had been making before. Uh, his main uh, sort of focus is audio and lighting and, and video camera because he's a professional photographer. And he uh, decided to take his business online and develop these courses. So I took the YouTube Academy and I just love the guy. He, he just, uh, in fact, this is his background. And he, he, told, he said we could steal it if we want. This is one of his backgrounds. Uh, so I use it uh, from time to time. And uh, he did such a good job at engaging us with his personality and his content was amazing. So I learned a lot about how to make YouTube videos. And then he did this thing called Ecamm, which is a... Uh, a live streaming platform, which I'm actually coming through Zoom on, I'm on Ecamm, made for Mac users. Uh, OBS, uh, people might be more familiar with, uh, that's a live streaming platform for non-Mac users, although I think Mac users can use it. So I learned how to use Ecamm, and then he, uh, he talked about this thing called Kajabi, and did an academy on Kajabi, and Kajabi is a platform, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, uh, it's kind of a one-shop deal or one-stop deal for someone like me. So Adrian's entire business runs through Kajabi. He does his videos through there. He does his email marketing through there. He has his online store through there. He does webinars through there. Everything is done from the one place. So I learned how to use Kajabi. So I spent five and a half months <laughs> learning all of this 
technology so that I can become a good virtual presenter. I'm actually a certified virtual presenter, which is kind of cool. Um, and that's how I spent my time. And so now I'm on Kajabi. Uh, the learning curve is still there, but I, I'm, uh, I'm, I think I'm, I'm, I think I'm getting somewhere, making some progress. And just a couple of weeks ago, I uh, launched my first course, my first online self-directed course, and it's called "Be a Hero in Your Workplace and in Your Life." And it's about the power of positivity. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but since the pandemic, uh, there's been some negativity flying around, perhaps a little more so than usual. <laughs> so I thought, well, this is kind of a, a good uh, a good time to launch this course. So I'm kind of uh, beta testing it now. You know, some I've discounted it so as people are you know paying a lot less money than they normally would, and some of my close friends and my wife uh, get to take it for free just to get some feedback uh, from them on the course. And uh, it's been a real incredible journey. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I was excited to hear about it. I knew you were onto something new, and uh, you are always looking for new challenges. And uh, I'm always looking for what you have next. Uh, <laughs> I think it comes from your love of learning, obviously, and you're willing to invest the time in, in learning that platform, and uh, that helps you get more creative, I'm sure. Um, well, you know, as a career development, as a career development practitioner, isn't that what we should be doing? You know, we're telling our clients to rebrand themselves, do something different if they have to, if they've been doing the same job for 20 years and that job is no longer there. Uh, one of the things that practitioners need to do is they need to walk their talk. So we need to sh we need to change too when we have to change. Absolutely, absolutely important. I agree with you totally. I am going to change a little bit. Um, I saw a quotation on your website, and it is about you supporting organizations. And I just want to open it up because part of mm -hmm. talking about what we do is bringing the different pathways that we all take with our work. So you support organizations, and I'm gonna read a quotation from your website. I believe that organizations would like to do a better job at engaging their employees, providing exceptional customer service, and building cohesive teams. So as a career professional, what advice do you give to organizations today who have moved on virtually and are trying still to adapt and understand what works and what doesn't? Yeah, uh, you know, I'm not sure that the pandemic has, well, it's created a different situation for us, but I'm not sure that that means we have to use different skills in order to do the things that you just talked about in the, that quote. Um, you said yourself, uh, you found me as engaging virtually as you did live. So why was that? The way, the reason that is, as far as I'm concerned, is because they show up the way I show up. I show up live being who I am and I show up virtually being who I am. So I have that energy, that passion for what I do, a commitment for what I do and the curiosity and respect for other people in this world. So in organizations, what I see happening, whether it's face to face or virtually, is leaders don't have the skills or the wherewithal to learn how to connect and engage with their people. Uh, I actually told somebody this the other day. I think organizations spend way too much time developing systems and not enough time developing people. And uh, that's to me, that's the key. I mean, it, it is about the people. And at the bottom of it all, everything that I do, absolutely everything that I do is about customer service. Without any customers, none of us would be here. You and I would not be having this conversation <laughs> and we would not we would not be doing what we'd be doing. And sometimes we forget about that. And we also forget about the fact that our coworkers and the people who provide goods and services to our organization, whatever organization that is, are also our customers. And we have to treat them with the same respect and dignity we treat everybody else. So is it different virtually than not? I'm not sure why. Uh, I actually think virtual, um, virtual team meet for example I'm, I'm doing some coaching with a, a senior management group now from a mcdonald's uh, franchise owner we get together once a month and what's cool about it is i can see all 20 of their faces on that screen and uh, i could read their body language on the screen it's not you know probably even easier than i can in a room where they're sitting around the table because my vision is limited when i'm at that table 
but at the screen, I could look at them all and go, okay, you're asleep. <laughs> What's going on with you? And I could prod you and wake you up. So I don't think that's anything different than me being aware of what people are doing in a live meeting than what they're doing in a virtual meeting. So I don't know if that answers some of your question, but those are some of my thoughts. It does. It does. It does highlight the importance of the importance of the client. Like to me, I, I use that as a cliche. Perhaps if my client is happy, then I'm happy, or my client's success is my success, and um, that's the focus is, is is our clients. So you have highlighted where I wanted you to be headed, <laughs> but because I do want to bring. <laughs> are you taking Are you taking me on a journey somewhere, Hoda? <laughs> <laughs> I do want to bring one more thing that you have participated in, and that is your book. Uh, and the book, okay. which, the name of the book is Get FIT and Go Far. And it is for organizations. I, I looked at it and I, uh, I think it builds on what you just said, but do you feel that what you wrote in the book is still viable then? I mean, from your answer, I get that, yes, it still works on virtually, uh, but can you elaborate on that and maybe share some of the tools that you, uh, cause you view your book as a tool really that you would suggest organizations use. Yeah, so uh, I am in two distinct, very distinct worlds. I'm in the career development world, working with career development practitioners, and I'm in the organizational world, working with leaders uh, and doing things like organizational development. Sometimes there's a there's a, a fusion because there are career development practitioners who are leaders. Uh, maybe they own a, a business or work for an organization where they're a leader in it. So sometimes there's a crossover. But I am in these two distinct worlds and I'm very conscious of it and and sometimes not all that happy about it. I think maybe if I just had one path, maybe that would be easier, but I don't. Uh, so the book, um, I you know, I wrote the book because uh, I have a lot of experience as a customer, <laughs> a lot of years as a customer. I have a lot of experience working within organizations. I've run my own company for 26 years now. Uh, I've been a volunteer in a number of different organizations. So I have all these different experiences with profit, nonprofit organizations. And uh, I've learned a lot along the way. And, and so what I tried to do in that book is, uh, you know, we all, when we work with an organization as a customer and we have, let's say, really poor customer service, we know exactly what that company should be doing differently to make the experience better, right? In fact, we talk about it to all our buddies and our family when we're angry about, you know, bad situation. Um, we also, if we've worked in a company, we know when our boss isn't doing what we think our boss should be doing or supervisor should be doing and be a better boss. So we could run the company better or we could be a better supervisor. And if you go to Tim Hortons every morning, uh, even now, you'll find out, you know, that everyone knows how to run the world or the country much better than how it's being run. Like we, we you know, we, we're all right. We, we, we know exactly what people should do to be right and run this thing better than anyone else. So what I thought I would do in that book is, okay, I've got thoughts and feelings about how I felt organizations that I'm involved with or was involved with should be. And I practice those things. It's again that walking the talk. I practice those things in my own organization or when I was on a board of directors or something like that where I had some leadership or some authority and they worked. So I shared the experience through a story. I shared the tips and tricks of the things that I use with a particular topic. Each chapter is divided into a particular topic. I shared the tips and tricks for that particular thing and it's something that a manager, leader, supervisor can start doing tomorrow. They don't have to wait. There's no, there's no theory in the book, although some of the things that I talk about I base in theory or refer back to theory through some quotation or some research or something that I had studied. But it's really a practical tool for any leader to use, and I think it's very applicable today. I, 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 I do believe it is a tool and it's like almost a, there's a guide within it. It's like a reference book, not something that you would read once and put aside, but you go back and forth to say, okay, what did Herky say at that point? So definitely. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, definitely. I hope people do that. <laughs> it's, it's a tool and I, you, I mean, you said it's a tool, but it really, I think, I think it's a reference guide as well. So people can go back to it and look through it. Thank you. Um, 
By the way, can I comment on something you said before? Sure. That I think is really important. You said uh, something, I don't remember the exact phrase, but it was something about uh, if your client's successful, you feel successful or something like that. Your client's successes are your successes. Was that the phrase you used? Uh, I define my success by my client's success. If, to, if they're successful, then I'm successful because like you okay, said, cool. I'm focused. Okay. So here's another thing I'd like to add to that. If, um, if career practitioners are really doing what I think they should be doing, which is empowering their clients to do the work and not do the work for them, then you might also feel you're successful when your client fails. Because your client is failing because they're taking a risk or doing something they may not be used to, and maybe it doesn't work, and that spurs them to actually try something else to do something that might work. So you might want to consider thinking about the failures are just as successful for you and your client as the success. I like how you bring, I, I love how you brought it out actually. I like that because <laughs> I'm always concerned when I feel that they did not accomplish what they set out to accomplish, even though I'm the one pushing them to get out of their comfort zone and try new things. But uh, so it's good for me to keep in mind and um, because I do measure myself by it. Like when I fail, I'm like, okay, now that was a lesson learned. Let's move on and keep going. So it's good to Add that to that. Exactly. Moment. You know how many times Colonel Sanders tried his recipe, don't, don't you? Yes, yes. Do you? Do you know how no, many times he tried his recipe? Number. I'm not good with numbers, but yeah, can tell us. It was, I'm probably, you know, lying about the exact number, but somewhere around 1,100 times he tried that recipe. Yeah, I know he, he like we always refer to him in that it's, um, it, it goes beyond the other saying that goes fall seven, pick up eight. So um, it's just about that persistence and what we believe in. And that's, I think, the message we try to pass to our clients as well. Excellent. Okay, I talked about you in the introduction as being multi-talented. And uh, we've kind of lifted some of your talents with music, writing book and all that. And so I always admire the constant innovation and work you do. And now you've kind of talked a little about it, about how you incorporate lifelong learning and what you learn, then you go and you apply it. So I am wondering now what is going through Erky Cutler's mind uh, for the future? What more ideas are going through your mind and what should we expect from more talents from you? Oh, that's sweet. Uh, well, uh, I really want to, uh, I'm going to follow my, my new mentor, Adrian, um, he's developed these academies and I want to, um, I want to copy him and he's totally okay with that. So I'm, I'm going to start a leadership academy, uh, again, for those organizational leaders, and I'm going to start a career development practitioner academy, uh, for practitioners who want to be coached and, you know, learn from some of the experiences that I've had. I'm not exactly sure how those academies are going to look right now. I'm working with a coach myself to develop the idea or the ideas, and uh, but it'll be it'll be coming to a store near you soon. I'm hoping to get these up and running probably within the next month or two. Uh, it will be kind of a subscription type ser service where you pay a certain amount a month, and for that money, of course, you'll get a certain amount of value, and that's what I'm trying to work out. What kinds of things would be appropriate and and worthwhile for people like you to want to subscribe to an academy like that. So that's the uh, what I'm doing on the professional side. And the other thing I'm jumping into, I believe, and this could be the first time I've done it on TV or video, I've said it on phone calls, is I'm going to jump into politics. I'm going to run for a town councillor here in High River, Alberta. Well, that's a surprise, but I, I shouldn't be. I, I knew you'd have something, one more thing to add to those talents. I'm glad I asked that question. Uh, so good luck with that. That's, uh, you know what, Thanks. you're uh, you're you're popular, and uh, I'm sure uh, you will get what you are hoping to achieve uh, with that, with the political gains. Well, I'm not popular here. Very few people know me. Uh, I only moved here about a year and a half ago, and for the last, of course, whatever a year, I haven't been going out very much anywhere. So, very few people know me. I'm not even sure I'll be able to get the hundred signatures I need to uh, to to run, but um, I started thinking about this from a movie that my wife made me watch on Netflix about uh, climate change, actually, and I, uh, I wondered what I was doing about that. And, and in our own little home here, we're pretty active around recycling and 
carbon footprint and things like that, which is nice for a little home, but I do nothing beyond that. And I said, that's a little weird that um, I'm concerned about the planet and where we're going and I, yet I do nothing about it. So what better way to do it than to jump into politics and uh, get some people excited or angry at me about uh, doing something in High River about the climate and you know the ecology and how we treat our town here. It's definitely an important topic and very hot topic at that. I think if that's what you're building your platform on, you're probably on the right track. But for me, I say you're popular because whenever I encounter someone within the care development field, then all I have to do is say your first name and they're like, yeah, yeah, I don't even have to say color. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I that's my mother's fault Toda, by giving me that name she could have said give me dave or bill but she gave me herky <laughs> uh, i think that makes i sense. guess it worked out it worked out well i think it worked out well well these are all the questions i have for you herky was there anything else you were hoping to talk about that i didn't ask you or something that you want to elaborate more on our discussion no i don't think so i just want to you know for whoever is watching this uh, I'm assuming you're probably a career development practitioner or part of Hoda's family. Uh, and I just want to say that, uh, you know, I'm so appreciative of the work that you do. Uh, I think people in this world need us uh, more now than ever uh, with all the um, upheaval that's going on. I, and I think universal energy is a part of that. And my wife is, is really uh, tuned into all of that. So I learned a lot about that from her. And, you know, uh, I want to encourage you to stay positive. Um, this too shall pass. And there are lots of things that you can do to improve your life and the life of your clients and your family and your friends by being positive and continue to take risks and step up and do some things that you never thought you would do before. Just keep on trucking uh, until you can't truck anymore. That's all I have to say. These are wise and timely words. Thank you so much, Herky. Thank you, Oda. Thank you for joining Huda's Career Info. I hope you enjoyed learning about Herky's multiple talents. You can connect with Herky via his website, herkycutler.com, or on LinkedIn using the links in the comments section. I am your host, Hoda, and until next time, keep moving forward.